Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So as mentioned in my last vlog, I'm going to take on the role of property management for my property this time around. So last year I used the letting agent just because it was a whole new process to me. I didn't really know the ins and outs and I thought I didn't really have much time. But as it currently stands, I do have a bit more time on my hands. So I thought why not take on the, you know, the role of being a more active landlord and basically doing all the things that I was paying my letting agent to do last year for me. So obviously deciding to manage your property by yourself means that you're also going to have to find a way of finding tenants because obviously those are the people that are going to pay your rent and so initially my thinking was that I just use my current letting agent to find me tenants and sort of manage the whole tenant letting process but when I inquired about the cost of this they told me it was going to cost a month's rent and I just thought that was way too much for what it was going to require so I did my research and basically identified that I was going to go forward with doing the whole tenant find process via open rent so for those of you that don't know open rent is basically like the largest online letting agent and basically they can do all of the things that you know a traditional letting agent would do for you but basically via online means and therefore it's going to be cheaper so as I said upon doing my research I found that open rent actually provide a rent now package which is basically what I need in terms of getting my tenancy started so they'll do with not only the advertising side of things but also make sure that you know tenancies are set up properly in terms of the more administrative side of things so on a side note, my tenants actually moved out of the property the day before yesterday. So I actually went up to go and view the property yesterday just to make sure that I was happy with the state and condition of things. Because obviously, if there's certain things that I'm not pleased with, that's going to come out of the deposit that is held in the safety deposit scheme. And so yeah, I went up to view the property yesterday. To be honest, in terms of the condition of the property, like I'm not, I'm not too mad at all. Like in terms of tenants, I think they were okay. They did a few funny things like drilling holes where they shouldn't open the bathroom to put a mirror up and also a dodgy wiring job in the kitchen because they were trying to fix the extractor fan by themselves rather than getting me to handle it as the landlord but anyway outside of those two main things the property was generally okay a bit of wear and tear in terms of just natural use and um, they did cause a couple of like damp and molding issues but you know I guess normal like tenancy problems but you know not the worst things to deal with so anyway yeah the tenants have moved out now so in terms of doing the bits of work and repair required to get the property back up to scratch to rent out to another tenant and that's probably going to take me a few days so probably into mid next week or end of next week before I can have the property ready to let out to um, new tenants but anyway in the meantime while that's going that definitely means that I need to get a push in terms of like listing the property because I want tenants in there as soon as I don't want to be missing out on any more rent than I need to so anyway, back onto the topic of this video, I'm going to be talking you guys through basically some of the considerations that I've been having in terms of letting out this property by myself. By the way, if you haven't seen that, I created a video previously talking about basically the pros and cons of self-management versus getting a letting agent to manage your property for you. So if you haven't seen that video already, I'm just going to link it up here in the cards. Okay, now let's talk about how to let a property in the UK without a letting agent. First thing you need to do, obviously you wanna find tenants. Now, to find tenants, you need to create a listing. Now, to create a listing without the help of a letting agent, you simply go to somewhere like Open Rent or you can create a listing on Gumtree. Now, I think Gumtree is actually a bit of an outdated method to do things and a lot of landlords are now using Open Rent, which is the place that I'm also going to. So yeah, you wanna start off on Open Rent by creating your listing. So this is where you'd include details about the property. So a a description about you know everything that comes with the property what you will allow and what you won't allow images of the property because obviously this is what is going to attract tenants in the first place and a number of other things however before creating a listing for a property or well at least before getting tenants to move into that property you want to make sure that the property is in safe and working conditions so that is basically that the property is safe for people to move into because obviously as a landlord you have legal obligations now in terms of these legal obligations as a landlord there are five main things that you need to make sure that you have in place before having people moving to your property now the first is a smoke alarm now these usually last for about 10 years and you may just need to change your battery from time to time second is a carbon monoxide alarm now these last for about five years i believe and again you just need to make sure that you're changing the battery as required i personally dealt with these two last year and based on my inventory checkout report they seem to still be working but obviously at the point of renting out to a new tenant i have to check with them also just to make sure everything's in hand the third is an epc so that is an energy performance certificate so this basically tells you how energy efficient a property is so for example a property that has single glazing rather than double glazing will obviously be a lot colder and not retain heat as well so again an EPC will basically tell you how efficient your property is and also provide guidance on what you can do to improve its rating 
The fourth is a gas safety check or gas safety certificate. So this basically checks like the gas appliances in the property and makes sure that they are in working order. I did mine last month or was it the month before? One of those anyway. So again, it's not due for another year. These need to be done every single year and they cost like 45 pounds via open rent. The fifth thing is the EICR. So this is basically like an electrical safety check and certificate. So kind of like similar to gas. Now this new regulation actually came in like July this year, I believe. So basically every tenancy that you have from July of this year needs to have this you know, certificate done. So obviously why am I trying to get new tenants into the property? I need to get this electrical safety check done. Right, so after you've dealt with those five main obligations as a landlord to make sure that your property is safe for a tenant to move in, then you can look at the pictures for your listing. Now, pictures are so, so important. And you may think, oh, actually, it's easy. I can go in there and take pictures of myself. Maybe you can, but you just need to make sure that taking pictures of a property in the right way is different to taking pictures of yourself, okay? Like, there are certain considerations that you have to have in place. You need to make sure that the lighting's good. You need to make sure that you're getting good angles. This is really your only chance to attract potential tenants to your property and so you don't want to mess it up and so I definitely advise if you feel that you're not able to take these pictures by yourself or you're not able to get somebody else who is able to then contract out the work to somebody else. Open Rent actually provide this service and I was actually going to opt for it prior to speaking to my letting agent who since told me that basically that she can send me the images used for the original listings from last year. So yeah that's great news for me I can save a bit of money on that side of things. Also in terms of creating your listings you need to determine how much rent you're going to charge. So I I already know how much I'm going to charge rent because obviously I worked with a letting agent last year and I'm just going to charge the same amount basically considering you know the times we're in but yeah I know how much I'm going to charge but if you're not sure you basically want to do some research in terms of comparables of houses in the same area so you want to look at how much houses of a similar build to yours similar sort of structure and type are charging for rent now based on the condition of your property you're either going to charge slightly more or slightly less or maybe even just keep it the same but you just want to do thorough research of the market to make sure that you're not overcharging or undercharging on your property because obviously this is like your business this is how you're making money if you're overcharge compared to others you're not going to get much interest in your property and if you undercharge you're losing out on some good money so you need to find that balance so after creating your listings it's on to doing the viewings do you feel capable of doing viewings by yourself or do you feel like you need a hand now i'm personally going to do the viewings by myself because i feel like i'm capable of doing it i feel like i understand what's required and i'm comfortable doing so however if you feel like you need additional help you can again enlist the services of a company to do this for you so again open rent do actually provide this service where they can do a company's viewings for you and so yeah if you feel like you need a bit of assistance there's definitely help out there the third Another thing that you need to consider if you're planning to let out a property without an agent is basically the referencing. Now referencing is a very very big thing and this is how you determine whether it's a good idea to have a tenant in your property or not okay. So you want to make sure that you tread very carefully. Now this area of tenant referencing is definitely one that I'm still not you know very comfortable with and so I do kind of feel like I need a bit of hand holding and so I'm so glad that Open Rent actually offered this service as part of their Rent Now package. So tenant referencing includes employment checks, checking IDs to make sure they obviously who they say they are checking for proof of income rental history and also getting you know references from previous landlords they also include credit checks which is very important so i just want to reiterate if you feel like you're not comfortable doing all of these things by yourself then definitely hand over the job to a professional to do it for you now the next consideration that you need to have when letting out a property by yourself without an agent is basically um, the tenant's deposit now when it comes to tenant's deposits you can't just save this money in your personal bank account no you can't do that you need to make sure that this money is held in a secure government backed scheme now i believe there are three of these schemes and you just need to make sure that the money goes through one of these schemes there's more information about how to do this on the government website but if you're unsure about doing this again you might want to get a professional team to do this for you so again as part of the rent now service is provided by open rent they actually take over this part for you and they do it for you so you do not need to worry you're going to be complying with the law by having them do this for you the next consideration property inventory checks now usually there's one at check-in and there's one at checkout um, my letting agents also did one sort of like mid tenancy and i'll probably go on to do that when i you know manage my property myself also but basically this inventory check-in is basically a check of how the property is 
prior to them moving in or at the point of them moving in versus when they move out. So this gives you a good idea of basically how they've managed the property, how they've looked after it, if they've caused any damage. And so basically you can do a cross check between the beginning of the tenancy and then at the end of the tenancy to see basically where things are. If there's anything owed to you and basically you may need to fix anything based on their damage, um, you can take this out of their deposit. And so yeah, it's really important that you do a proper inventory. Now for me personally, this inventory stuff is not something that I plan to deal with by myself. I just feel like it's, it's a little intense. And um, it's a very detailed report there's a lot of pictures that come into it a lot of detailed descriptions about the state of the property before and after and so i'd rather leave that to professionals that have the eye for doing it to do it so yeah i'm gonna leave open rent to do that for me i think it costs a little extra on top of the um, rent now service but i think it's well worth the money the final consideration is the tenancy agreement. So last year for my tenants, I had an ASC, which is an assured short hold tenancy, which is basically like a short term tenancy agreement. So as with a number of the other things that I've mentioned, Open Rent are also going to manage this area for me and it forms part of that rent now package that they offer. Now in summary, you'll see that a lot of the more administrative side of things, I'm going to hand over to Open Rent to do as part of that package, just because these are the things that I don't feel very comfortable at doing at this point in time, but at the same time, I still want to be at more hands-on landlord and be able to like you know start overseeing certain things that you know you would see if you were a day-to-day -day, you know actively managing landlord so anyway i feel like the benefit of using this open rent service is the fact that you're going to save a whole lot more money compared to if you went to a traditional letting agent so as i said my letting agent is looking to charge me a full month's rent to do this whole service for me that is the tenant finding and advertising process whereas if i go with open rent it's going to cost me maybe all together if I add on a few additional things outside of the of what the package includes it may cost me maybe about a hundred pounds but that is a very very big difference compared to a whole month's rent and at the same time I believe that I'll be able to pick up some of these additional things that I feel uncomfortable with right now and who knows maybe in a year or two years time I'll feel comfortable to take on some of these you know AST agreements myself and maybe even some of the inventory and you know some of the other little things that I've covered in this video so anyway I hope you find this video useful I'm definitely going to go and crack on with my property listing now and um, there are a few details that I just need to check with my letting agent but yeah I'm going to get on with my listing now because I want to make sure that this property is rented out ASAP I do not want to be missing out on any more rent than I need to and so yeah that is me for this video if you've enjoyed it please do give it a thumbs up please do also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and also turn on your bell notifications so thank you for watching and I'll catch you later bye